We are live. We are live. This is the market update. The market is up. Of course it is. We've been talking about it for a month. I'm your host, Bill Noble. If you want to figure out how to get into this market and you want to know the coins to get into, other than Bitcoin, don't go anywhere. We're going to go through this news and live TA. Here is what's happening. Everyone has to go out of stable coins and into crypto. It is that simple. So imagine all the stable coins that have been created since 2017. They are now looking for a home. And that is why this market is doing what it's doing today. So if you need a roadmap in crypto, subscribe to this channel. Turn on alerts so you know when we're going live. And if the content works for you, hit the like button. All right. Let's welcome who's on the stream. Samad. All right. Wrong again. Tito. GF. Welcome. Right. We have Zoran from Croatia. Richard Barry. Augusta, Georgia. Right. Hamilton, Ontario. Swan Dog in the house. Aruda. Reverend Flashback. Rugby Performance Labs, right? Jersey's here. Notorious Love from Donato. Douglas Earhart from Rochester. Okay, SFG is here. Long and strong, no doubt. Oh yeah, by the way, if you've never heard of GLDN or Bark, and you want a solution to all this disaster that's going on with hazardous material and drinking water, don't worry. I have exactly what you're looking for. Okay. We have S coin fork here. Launch shark. Welcome. Double AM. I need a nap. Driftless crypto. Wow. London up late. Belgium in the house. Uh, Mr. Brass from Mexico. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Mr. Moby Dick is here. Okay. I'm just not even playing around. Let's go. Let's go. It doesn't matter how you cut it. I got something to say. What is the secret to having strong conviction in a crypto bull market? Four steps. Quietly get bullish when everyone is bearish. That occurred in December, and that occurred off the Gensler hysteria. Probably the peak of the hysteria was when they went after Paxos. It was the end of the world supposedly but you gotta get bullish quietly as quietly as i can do anything when the rally starts push the bullish case push it real good get more bullish when the market corrects which is what we helped do two days ago then stay with the trend never take a victory lap if you're wearing a lampshade on your head, drinking a bottle of champagne, talking about how great crypto is, sell. No victory laps. The trend is your friend until it isn't. If I had to say, where are we now? This could be like the new list. We had a list like this for the bear market. Okay, we got more bullish when the market corrected. We stayed with the trend. We got quietly bullish. I actually think we're right here. When the rally starts, push the bullish case. Welcome, James. GLDN. GLDN, I work at a place called Emerging Asset Groups. We've got a new name today. GLDN is the native token of a commodities trading ecosystem. So if you'd like to buy a water pricing token, because 10% of America's usable drinking water has been contaminated by whatever alien, Russian, or deep state invasion that's causing chemical trucks to blow up. You would need GLDN, okay? You get it on Uniswap, swap it for, you know, ETH to GLDN. So obviously, right here at, uh, I don't know, 0.59 cents, this is Gary. Thanks, Gary. Boom. And this is everyone realizing that they need GLDN because they're going to need Bark. Bark is a mechanism to help get water from one place to another. 
company I work for, that's what they do. All right. They're going to help get water from one place to the other. And I don't know how you want to draw this, but I don't think you have to worry because, you know, this is not investment advice, but this looks like a new uptrend. So I own this token. I own GLDN. I don't even think I have to go into it because I'm pretty sure somewhere in the world, there is a shelter in place order. Shelter in place. There it is. Big story happening in Tucson. Extreme emergency alert telling people to shelter in place and turn off air conditioning and heating. Well, I mean, if they're telling you to turn off air conditioning and heating, I'm sure water is fine. Whatever. Okay. Sad as this is, there is a group that was getting ready for such an event. That's the group I work for. Meanwhile, back at the crypto ranch, Macro Guru predicts 10,000 Ethereum but says other ETH rivals will outperform. What I really like is that there's nothing like a good God candle to get the market back focused on price. You know what I'm saying? Just, just ramming speed as our thumbnail title suggests. Now, there are a lot of hyperbole based titles in crypto, but the fact that people are starting to actually write about it Okay, that this is not front page. This is now the new front page news. Bitcoin price, eyes 23K. So much for that. Let's go to 24K. How about 26? The Bitcoin hash rate is high as the industry gets some breathing room. Okay, so the hash rate is moving. This doesn't have a graph. Things are humming on Bitcoin. Every stable coin holder that doesn't know what to do, they're just going to turn around and buy Bitcoin. Meanwhile, as the media continues to focus on SBF, if there's an SBF headline, the market's going up. That's my attitude, right? Sometimes we write about price, but all the big headlines. Two people secretly guaranteed Sam Bankman Freed's bonds. New FTX founder, right? Dean of Stanford Law School and a senior research scientist signed for his bail. Stanford University, a proud group, no doubt. Okay. Here's ready. Who cares? Who cares? It's about price. It's about interactive brokers rolls out Bitcoin and ETH trading to professional investors in Hong Kong. So much for the Chinese not liking crypto. They're trading it in Hong Kong now. Napster. What's Napster? Oh my God. Only people like me know what Napster is. It was the original service where you could just basically download music for free illegally. It was very popular back in 2000. Okay. They're on an acquisition spree and they want to get into Web3. What's old is new again. Here's our shelter in place order. Don't worry. Everything's fine. Just move along. Amazon's back in the headlines. Remember the partnership with Avalanche? I mean, is there any real limit to how much Avalanche could go up given that they're partnered with Amazon? I mean, do you think Amazon is just going to make a one-off announcement about Avalanche or there could be like continued news flow on that? Okay. NFT characters. Wow. NFTs, they're dead, huh? Guess not. Guess not. I, I kind of like this. Keanu Reeves' criticism of crypto is only going to make it better. Okay? It will strengthen it in terms of how it's safeguarded, says the star of The Matrix. How long do you think it's going to take before celebrities realize that the mistake that got made was endorsing a specific crypto product how long do you think it's going to take before people like Musk, people like Keanu Reeves, just start talking about crypto in general? They don't have to take an endorsement deal. They just have to start talking about it to get people's attention. Meanwhile, the European Central Bank says don't own Bitcoin. No comment. 
New Kansas bill would cap political donations in crypto at $100. <laughs> right? Is this is perfect? I mean, is this is this not perfect God candle headlines? Right? Doge smoking higher after Musk tweets a photo of his dog in the Twitter CEO chair. Doge and Sheeb are up. Sheeb's probably going to take out its high. I did a short on that. It's the bigger the base, the higher in the space. Okay, Gary. I mean, this guy could be the best thing that ever happened to crypto. The more he tries to stop it, the higher it goes. This guy's just going to sit in his chair and watch it go up. And then he, to figure out what's going on, he'll have to dial into the market update. Because I don't think anyone knows what's going on yet. Except for the fact the Fed is done and we've got natural disasters all over the United States or unnatural disasters that are going to slow down economic activity and everyone's got to get out of stable coins. Okay, so as long as crypto platforms aren't registered as banks, they will not qualify as custodians. Fine, we can just do it all at Coinbase. No problem. Okay. Again, SEC proposes new rules. It's everywhere. Oh, and of course, what's going on in the market is nowhere near as important as Sam Bankman Fried used the VPN to watch the Super Bowl. Tesla board members say Elon Musk doesn't mind going bankrupt. You know, I don't think they're reading this headline right. Elon Musk is saying, I'm bullish electric cars. I'm going to Mars. Come get me. Come get me. You want to get into an electric price, electric car price war? No problem. Good luck charging your electric vehicles. I'll drag my feet on charging stations. Right? Let's give Elon the benefit of the doubt. Elon has taught us all how to take risk because in order to take risk, you have to believe in yourself. If you believe in yourself, it takes the fear out of taking risk. Yes, if you're wrong, you'll lose money, but you don't have to be afraid. And that's what the market is telling you right now. Okay. So let's go to Bitcoin on the 90 minute DeMarc chart. Uh, I believe yesterday we were talking about how this was a perfect sort of corrective activity that has concluded itself. And then it just simply took off. You've actually got a 13 top coming in right now at a tactical level. Okay. The thing that's kind of nuts is that you have no such thing in ETH. I, ETH's got more to go. I mean, ETH is hitting resistance, right? 1,700 is still a very big GAN number. No one wants to buy ETH up at 1,700. I'm like, Okay. Now I get it. There's resistance. There's the DeMarc resistance at 1681. Okay. What I also get is that this was a nine top, right? You had a little pause. Okay. This is Tom DeMarc's work. So it counts a set of conditions like, I don't know, the high is higher than the high one day ago. So you go one through nine. That's a setup. That's called the setup phase. You get a pause and then boom, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to 13. You got two more days of this in ETH. Two more days. Okay. Bitcoin talked about this yesterday, right? Two days ago, nine bottom, wave four, new high coming up. So new high, wave five, and check this out, folks. You know, it goes one through nine. We're on a two on a daily chart. So many smart asses on Twitter are like, oh, I'm going to brag about how I shorted it and made money. Dude, the trend is your friend. Now, ETH. So here was the 13 top that gave you a top temporarily. Now you could have seven more updates. I would say... ETH is definitely going to attack 1742, right? It's going to attack 1742. There is resistance up here. Let me ask you this. 
What happens if ETH decides to take out and go to, say, 2K? Like, what does the market look like if resistance in ETH is no longer resistance? It's a question that I'm posing. Okay. Hope everybody out there is paying attention. I don't think anything is going to stop Cardano. Like, I know YouTubers like play to these guys. You got your stochastics oversold. You got a nine bottom and this hasn't even made a new high. Right. This is like the second day of nine higher, most likely. And there's probably a lot of people who are like, oh, I'm afraid to get in. Don't be. Right. You don't have to buy it right this second. You don't have to buy the God candle, particularly since there's resistance. But if it doesn't back off or if it goes through, you just buy whatever dip you get. Speaking of dips, right? Here's render, right? Pounding the table on this two days ago. Okay. You got your 13 top. So if you miss render, you might get a dip. You might get a dip. And if you get one, take advantage of it. Okay. Okay, just for just for just to be complete, ETH Bitcoin on a monthly chart is on a two. January was one up month. February, the sky was falling off Gensler. Can you even tell? Seven more up months. Why not? Same thing in ETH, big moving average at 1831. Can I, can I ask a stupid question? If you look at this chart, what stops Ethereum if it's above 1,800 from going back to 4,000? Like, why, why can't that happen? Like, not in one day, but, you know, eat 4,000. Okay. Why not? The supply of ETH is shrinking. <clears throat> not by a lot, but it's not inflationary anymore. It is shrinking. Something to think about. Let's try a weekly chart in Bitcoin. So if you look at a weekly chart, you know, at a tactical level, 25,000 is a big deal and you got two more up weeks. So my guess is you got a blow off top that's going to hit 26 or 27,000. You're just going to have panic buying in this thing. Panic. Okay, let's just look at ETH. Let's go to a weekly on ETH so we get a complete picture. I mean, weekly ETH is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. There's the 13 bottom. This would be the first confirmed up week. That's crazy. So this is like telling you that the Ethereum trend on a weekly DeMarc chart has not even started yet. Like this week, up this week would confirm a bottom is in. That's how early you are. Like this is the chart of the day. You know, I always say there's always one chart. You can be like, okay, that's the market update. Done. Okay. Okay. So double AM is asking, what about the Shanghai upgrade? And, you know, eat stakers coming out and launching, selling. Yeah, they can sell. Why would they? I mean, what, if they sell their ETH, what are they going to sell it for? Stable coins? Bitcoin? Maybe. Maybe they just convert it all into Bitcoin or they convert it into other things. That, that ETH is not leaving the market. And everyone is expecting all this selling from Shanghai. They may not get it. I mean, everybody, including me, expecting a whole bunch of buying off the, uh, off the merge. And everyone's expecting selling off Shanghai. I mean, if the crypto market looked like it did in November, okay, yeah, I can see panicking. But what is there a panic about? Gary Gensler just made your whole year. A lot more crypto is here. Jason made it, right? Ocho is here from Sydney, Australia, right? Arafat is in the house. Moon Sector 7, right? He's finally made it to a live stream on a slow internet connection. He had to get on in Germany when everyone was asleep. I appreciate that. Okay. A little sheepdog love as well. Thank you. Okay. 
Wrong again, says it looks like 2,800 could stop ETH. That's possible. That's possible. Okay. That is possible. Tito reminding you to hit the like button. Okay. Solana, the coin nobody wanted at 10, okay, is now moving probably to 38. So let's just put the DeMarc work up here on the daily chart to see where we are. Okay. Now, my guess is because this is on a 12, you're going to have one more big God candle up in Solana before the next dip. So let's transition into trading view because I think you got the idea here. So this pretty much sums up life in ETH. Okay. We'll start with a Fibonacci retracement. We go boom, boom. Okay. The 38% retracement in ETH held to the absolute number. So if you sold your ETH below 1500, here's what happened to you. Sold it on top of the biggest technical point in the history of crypto. That would be the 2017 high at 1425. So they ran the stops, got everyone out. Then they just take it vertical. Coincidentally, that level was the 38% retracement of the entire move up. This is like technical analysis textbook, page three. Down, holds, boom. So I'm, I'm turning into the John Madden of crypto. Boom. Okay, hidden pivot analysis. Okay. I think it's 1739 minimum for ETH, to be honest. You know, minimum, minimum, I think it's 1850. Okay. I'm, I'm guessing that you're going to have like two more big candles up. And then it's going to pull back. If it doesn't go back below 1660, they're going to take it up again. The market has pretty much taught you not to buy it when it's up. So it goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. It's, it's like trained you to not buy it when it's up. Now, I know it's at resistance. I know. I see it. Go back to this. You know why I published this? Because like all the charts broke down three days ago on Gensler. Like if you tried to draw stuff on charts, it, eh, it didn't look good. I used the DeMarc work because I like that as a reversal system. But a lot of stuff like broke down. So, you know, am I afraid it, it, that this is resistance? No. What this is, this is where ETH has stopped in the past. I don't think it's resistance. I don't. I mean, okay, yeah, it stopped there a bunch of times. So what? Probably what they're going to do is they're going to ram it through. They're going to do this, right? People don't think they have to buy, and that's okay. Because they're going to do this. That's how they're going to do it, in my opinion. Okay? Okay, Zoran is here from Croatia. Welcome. Welcome. Oklahoma in the house. James is here giving me some notorious love. Great filibuster. Hello. Right. Chidame is here. Bull runner in the house with his nephew in the car listening. What's up to bull runner's nephew? How you doing? Okay. So great filibuster says if people are scared of stable coins and going to crypto, wouldn't they be exposed to a major possible dump? Yes, if they buy Bitcoin at 30K, but if you buy Bitcoin at 24K, maybe not. The sooner they get in, the better. That's why this thing is doing a God candle today. Okay. Okay. Brick Dreams had to open a, a ticket with YouTube. Sorry you're having problems with that. We're trying to get on anywhere from 1.30 to 3 uh, Central Time every day. Okay, Phoenix is here. Welcome. Aka giving me the notorious love. Okay, let's go to hidden pivot work in Solana. We were working on this yesterday. Okay, Solana on a four hour chart. So this is the structure we had yesterday. I said Solana would have to break 23. Next target, 26. 
Minimum objective is 33. I talked about 33 at the start of the year. People thought I was out of my mind, right? That's back where it was on the FTX debacle. Everyone wants to know who bailed out FTX. What they really should be asking themselves is where was Solana when the FTX debacle went down? Okay, Avalanche. Oh, man. You want to get a little wild? How about we get a little wild? Let's get wild. It's like, you know, the, the, the thumbnail that my friend Kathy Crypto drew about the bull smashing through a wall to get to the Bitcoin. Awesome art. Full credit goes to like the artist, the producer. We even got a guy doing video editing. Love you guys. Avalanche, four hours. Breakthrough 2562. You can have an intelligent discussion about 29. Is it going to happen today? No. But again, you got to remember, one of our colleagues just told you, if they have to get out of stable coins and they're, they don't want to be exposed to a major dump. So to them, 24 in Bitcoin, eh, it's not cheap. I thought, oh, we were there a couple of days ago. So what? Right? I mean, Bitcoin was at 24K back in August. Right? I, I mean, this is not like, oh, we've reached unprecedented new heights. No, people. And you know what? 8% or 9% may not be a God candle. How do you like them apples? You like apples? How do you like them apples? 24K is not a God candle. Oh, my God. Kent from Sweden is up late. Man, I thought about you today. I'm like, oh, God. We had some legitimate difficulties today. We're sorry about getting on late. 24,000 is not high for Bitcoin. East Tennessee, welcome. Okay. Aiken is like, I'm lost because I haven't been able to listen to the market update. Well, sir, the good news is, is you're here. And here's the synopsis. Everyone is still bearish. You can tell by this price action. No one is long. Everybody has stable coins. Everybody wants to do staking for a 5% annual yield. And ETH and Bitcoin are going up 5% a day. Okay. Right. Big Matting says the market is catching people off guard. And we have 100 messages in the chat. <clears throat> so Sephiro is saying, yeah. Yeah, long your longs and long your shorts. I got a great idea. Let's like take the short selling mentality out. Short selling mentality is the market is no good and I want to sell rallies because the rallies will be sharp, the bulls will be fooled, and then the bottom will fall out. And people are still afraid of the heights that they see because they're afraid of a repeat of the knife experience of last year. So when you think about being short, it's because really, really, you don't want to experience the knife experience from last year. That awful feeling where you, you're long crypto and it plummets lower. Or you just have to watch it plummet lower and get a little crypto PTSD. You got to get rid of that. You got to get a yoga instructor. You got to, you know, you got to do whatever it is you have to do to put down the knife experience. Knowing that it's natural. That every time you watch this thing go down, do you think it's easy to go on live television when this thing is down and say, you know, thanks, Gary Gensler, everyone's coming out of stable coins when this thing is just like shitting on itself? It's not that easy. Okay, but it, my job is to do the tough thing so you can make good trading decisions or hold on to your portfolio and not puke everything out to smart money. Okay. So Ash has been doing okay. BitBoy Al saying, yeah, we're getting a big pump. SEO, what's up? Brick Dreams. Okay, screaming for more likes. Appreciate that. Somebody was asking about uh, INJ. Let's check that out. Okay, some of these altcoins are looking for a blow off top. It's that simple. It's on an 11 on a daily chart. You're going to have 12, 13. And then some, that's what I'm guessing, right? So, you know, they're already taking this up. 
they they know where the resistance is in the small altcoins, particularly in the ones that have outperformed. I would say the biggest risk in small altcoins is that everybody flies into Bitcoin. That Bitcoin becomes a wrecking ball, which is what it used to be back in 2017. It used to be, right? In other words, when Bitcoin went up, altcoins automatically went down. Oh my God, Polkadot. 90 minute chart just started to go up. Like you just had the nine and now it's going countdown. Right. First part of the trend is done. They're looking at the second part of the trend. Just curious what the daily chart looks like. Same thing. Okay. There's your 13 top. There's your blow off top. There's your bottom that gives you your wave two. And this is wave three in polka dot. How about seven up days in polka dot? How about this? Nothing is going to stop polka dot. Nothing. Nothing. Interoperability. It's here. Right near protocol nine nine top, okay near resistance, okay. So you know, this is going to back off or pause. That's cool. You probably want that, but look at this. I mean, okay, it might back off. It might chill out. So if you don't have a plan, please get one. Please get one. Right? Because near protocol, right? Just take this off. No, nope. take it off. There we go. That little one, that's wave one. This two, that's wave two. Wave three can be really big. It can be, it's it's definitely above wave one. How far? I don't know. Maybe it's $3. Maybe it's 380. Avalanche can't stop loving it. Nine bottom and we're on a two. Ask yourself where this is. Seven updates. Optimism, which I have to do over here. Do not let me do optimism on the mark. Not have the right symbol in there for whatever reason. Okay. So again, this is unbelievable. Like, look at this shakeout. Look at how they did this. Right. Optimism had a diamond. It's a four hour chart. You get the explosive rally. They unwound the whole up move and smoked everybody out. Now everyone's like, I can't buy it. Meanwhile, it's just completely breaking out. If you do this like eight hour, maybe. I mean, it's crazy. If you look at the eight hour chart, right? Of optimism. Everyone's like, well, I missed the dip. No, you didn't. Optimism is where it was. I don't know. It's, yeah, it's up. Okay. It's up today. It's up 15%. All right, fine. But if it dips back to 265, okay, 4.4 is the target. Now, what else? Now, what other point do I want to make about this? Let's just, let's just look at this for a second, right? Let's have a, like a brief educational moment. Okay. In this range here in the diamond, optimism did not trade well and probably scared people. And this definitely scared people. Okay. And how do you avoid getting scared? You just follow your bull market playbook. Get more bullish when the market corrects. You know when you want to be the most bullish? When it's down. Now, in equity, sometimes when you get a mature trend, you can get the major dumps. So by the time everyone figures out that they should be doing number three, you have to be careful. That's probably 27K Bitcoin. But this, number three, takes the fear out of this. It's like down, 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 down. Oh my God. Then it breaks above 265. Everyone's afraid to buy it. Then it goes to 4.4. And how many coins can we do this type of drawing on today? I would imagine a lot. Okay. All right. Chris Martin says, I don't have diamond hands. I have noble hands. I appreciate that. I tend to not say those type of things about myself because remember, no victory laps, but I appreciate you saying it. 
I also appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. Okay. Doge. You know, I, I don't think people fully understand Elon's little joke about the dog today. Like, do you think people are following along that this guy is going to use Twitter as a payment platform? Has anyone figured this out yet? I, I don't think people figured this out yet. Like what happens if Gensler is forcing everybody into state out of stable coins at the same time, Musk gets Bitcoin and Doge rolling on Twitter. Like the bullish catalysts are right there in front of your face. This could go to 11 cents. It looks like it's just breaking out now. This is really not bullish at all, people. Just, you know, I mean, this, you know, the CEO of like the biggest CEO in the world is telling you, what is he telling you? Buy crypto. Ke Keanu Reeves and Elon Musk ring your doorbell and they say, buy crypto. What are you going to do? Say no? No. No, you're not going to say no. We were looking at Galaxy Digital the other day. Oh my God, we got to pull this up. By the way, folks, if you like the live TA style on big updates like this, particularly since we had some technical difficulties, if you like this, let us know. We'll do more of it. And here's what's fun about Galaxy. Unless there's something wrong, it's not up that much. Now, either Mike has got a problem. It's a big hedge fund run by ex-Goldman guy, Mike Novogratz. Looks like they're selling rallies, 62% at $4.28. Coinbase, we were looking at this yesterday. Oh my God, it hit 62% to the number. And then it went straight up. And now everyone feels like they missed it. And now if that's the mentality you take, you really are going to miss it. You really are going to miss it. A lot of people like ICP. I'm guessing on a daily chart, your minimum upside target is seven and a half. Okay. The key breakout level is 624. If you're keeping track in ICP. Okay. Support is all the way down here at 559. You may see that again. You may not. This thing may just go, right? A lot of people like this. Big on YouTube, BitBoy and all these guys. You know, I'm not the only one that knows about, you know, the, the, the four rules for a bull market. What do you think BitBoy is going to do when ICP and Cardano start making new highs for this move? What do you think he's going to do? Okay, BitBoy Al likes this time for the for the live stream. I appreciate that. Relax82 says, you know, respect the pump. Kent wants more TA. And we have a friend joining us from India. Okay, Engine Coin. Okay, I think we looked at this earlier. 51 cents and again is resistance, but this is just starting. You could have seven more updates in this. Now I'm sure tactically it's overbought. It's not tactically overbought. Like this is a textbook move. You have your one through nine. That's your setup. You have this little baby dip and then boom. You know, you could be taught this is minimum three to four more days of upside, assuming no disturbance, right? I mean, GLDN, everything is moving. Altcoins are better than stable coins. And that's the market update. I'm somewhat interested in Aave. In other words, if you do this hidden pivot analysis, you could find something that's kind of like just broken out, like 84-ish. Ave, it's a daily chart. And this hidden pivot analysis is normally for like 
you know, like four hour charts, maybe. Okay. What do you think the world's going to look like with Abe at 117? Crazy, right? We talked about this yesterday. Total three. 38% retracement to the number. You can go back and watch that. To the number. Then it hits it again. So they hit it on what I call CPI, a.k.a. fake inflation news, because we already know about inflation. No new information was contained in there, yet they just couldn't stop selling it. And now all the people who sold it down here are afraid to buy it up here, which is why it's going to go higher. Because, I mean, people just got themselves so twisted. Look at the 13-day RSI. It's just taken out the little moving average that I have go with it. Micro strategy stock up 10% today. Okay. Like everybody in this range that shorted it is now underwater. And this is headed for a huge gap. The top of the gap is at 322. You want to get in the way of this? Be my guest. I got a better idea. How about we stay with the trend and make money? Okay. Yeah, I know. It's super easy to be bullish, but. You want to be the most bullish when the market corrects or when everyone is bearish. Like, I'm going to run with this until I can't run with it anymore. Like this tweet, I have 65 likes. 65 out of 18,000 Twitter followers. Maybe we'll just move it to the top of the list. You know what I'm saying? Like when I publish this, I'm like, wow, this is going to be really useful for people. Okay. No one liked it. I'll like it. <laughs> Seriously. Right. All you see is bearish news. Wrong again, likes the PowerPoint. Okay. I'm cool with that. Okay. Joe Mike is here from sunny Tampa. Okay. Um, wrong again, says it's hard to sit on your positions, but if you did, he thinks it's 28. Um, I, I've got some people who think 26 to 27, okay? Jamie is asking an interesting question. So uh, for the average person with an average salary willing to make some extra cash, it has to be alts, not BTC. Not necessarily, okay? You got to start somewhere. Okay, so if you're an average person, you're allowed to have an average position so you can learn, right? Yes, everyone wants to talk about the 100X, okay? I have my ideas about 100X. You hear about it every now and again. I own the tokens, and I don't want to go on and on and on. But, you know, we just lost 10% of the U.S. water supply. Bond, okay, you keep, somebody's asking about this. So they keep spiking it and they keep taking it down. Now, what happens with coins like this is people get caught and then they give up. So every time it goes up, everyone gives up. And what frequently happens is the focus goes from resistance to the fact that it's made a base. So if whatever this is has any redeeming financial value or any redeeming fundamental value. If it takes off, all the people that gave up down here will be sorry because it'll just turn around and go right back up again. Now, as frequently in crypto in this environment, you're looking for the bigger the base, the higher into space. <laughs> Driftless Crypto says 100X is too small. You know, it reminds me of a song done by a band Garbage for a James Bond movie, The World Is Not Enough. I don't mind aiming high. I just don't want you gambling on Binance Smart Chain. Make money first. Prove to yourself it's a bull market. Remember this from two days ago? You know, the market's like, it's okay to buy a dip because you got to prove it to yourself. Okay. Okay. Bart, on it since the first week of January. On it. 
on it, on it, on it, and not going to get off of it. Not going to get off of it. This is the announcement to the world. I'm bullish. Come get me. Come get me. Make me change my mind. Okay. Yes, Driftless is like uh, 100x is not enough for the type of coins that we're talking about, like Gold Retriever and Bark. Yeah. Like, I, I think that's life-changing money, hence me going to work there. Hence me going to work there. Okay. Your white nose, your white noise videos. Hello. Thank you for doing your work. Okay. Where do you think Cardano's price would be if Bitcoin hits 100K? Greetings from Germany. Okay. So let's do some on the fly Cardano long term price prediction. How about that? Normally I save these things for separate videos, but since the market is smoking to the upside, talk a little bit of Cardano. Okay, so here we have a Cardano. We'll do this on a two-week chart. No, we'll do it on a one-week chart. Okay. So on this one-week Cardano chart, I'm connecting three key points. Okay. The high in 2018 from when it came out, the blow-off top high in 2021, and the FTX low. Okay, and I'm creating something called, I'm creating something called a fib channel. Comes the fib channel. Connect this, this, and that. Okay. And I haven't done this yet, but this, you're really looking at Freestyle TA for those who like that. I know wrong again likes the PowerPoint. I will bring that back. Fib time zone. Okay. So here's what I'm doing. I am connecting the inception point for Cardano that I have in 2018. I'm connecting that to the COVID low, right? And I'm looking at $3 by December of 2023 when I do it this way. So if Bitcoin hits 100K by the end of this year, or if Bitcoin hits 100K uh, by, say, the end of August, that sounds crazy, but... You know, if you get 100K Bitcoin, you're going to have $3 Cardano, I think, at a minimum. Okay. J-Man is asking, can we talk about ICP? I did talk about ICP a little bit. You can do ICP here. Okay, drawing it up now. Okay, so earlier we talked about ICP going to seven and a half if it takes out 624. I don't really see anything stopping this. Sometimes looking at a three day chart can be interesting. You know, the thing that strikes me about this is this parallel channel. In other words, even if you assume that this was in a range, the top of the range is 780. It's a straight up parallel channel. So this is ICP on a three-day chart. I, I mean, you, you just you don't even talk about anything else until it gets to 780. Okay. Pancakes and peanut butter is here. Thank you. Saying Cardano needs more use cases. No doubt. 
no doubt. But the higher the price goes, or actually, um, the more they, the lower the price is, the stronger the incentive they have to get it together. To get it together. Okay. So Carpe Diem is doing well in render. I'm glad to hear that. Okay. Oh, how's oh somebody's asking about Audius. So I do like Audius. Did not exactly turn out to be the next Apple Music. Now, Napster may be doing a panic entrance into the market, but Audius is already there. Right? So the thing that's interesting about Audius is, I mean, people gave up on this to such a degree that we're still in basing mode. Like if this is not the case, for the bigger the base, the higher into space. I don't see any reason why Audius can't go back to $1.80. Right? One guy says it's ugly. One guy says it's juicy. I mean, longer, bigger picture, you know, this is not very attractive because everybody is bailing, which, you know, okay, I get it. People are bailing. It, it, you know, if you got to pay your taxes or if you're taking a tax loss, Maybe, you know, you're bailing on stuff here. But, you know, you take the tax loss and then what happens if there's some sort of Web3 based catalyst? I, I mean, I, I don't understand why you would give up on this. I mean, when this first came out, the original bull move was at like 20 cents. It's at 29 cents now. Right? Where, where is this thing? Yeah, 29 cents. I mean, it's, it's almost like nothing ever happened. It's like you're starting over again, right? Filecoin may be something similar. I think we've looked at this before. Robert just got here from Sandy Hook. What did you miss? Robert, everyone is still bearish. And if they're not bearish, they're not long enough, which is another point to make. So it's one thing to say I'm bullish. And it's another thing to say I'm bullish and my position fits my view. People's, you can tell by the way this trades, people's positions do not fit their view. And if you're long stable coins, you have to get out and go into Bitcoin. Okay, Filecoin, probably looking at six more up days. Like this, this down move to this support level, this DeMarc point at 463, that was, that was the dip. Okay. Okay, I'm looking for Terra on here. Not, not coming up here. Okay, Osborne, let's go over here and try to get Terra. Okay, this looks like a Uniswap coin. Okay, this may not be the one. We'll take a look at it. We'll take a look at it and we'll come back to you. We'll find out what Terra is supposed to be. Okay, so somebody is mentioning DXY. The DXY, the dollar index, is up, and so is crypto. You know, there's an important thing that you got to remember that frequently when everyone looks at the same thing, it's wrong. You traded crypto off the dollar index the last couple of days. You probably didn't get this right. This was not easy to get right. I still think the fact that the dollar index cannot get above the 23% retracement. You have something that will not go above or below a 23% retracement. You have a possible mega trend. A mega trend. Okay. H bar. And you got to be careful with these, with, with these, with these YouTube coins. I mean, when you got stuff like this, right? I mean, Hedera was at 35 cents. Again, just like drawing stuff on this. Not stuff, you know, drawing indicators.
See how Hedera took out this line yesterday? This is actually a three-day chart. I left it on three-day. Interesting. So you're not going to see this everywhere. Probably should do PowerPoint on everything's three-day chart for streams coming up. Okay. When you have these YouTube coins, they broke out, right? They, they stopped everyone out over a three-day period. So here, if you just look at this candle, right? They got the shorts, they got the longs, they got everybody, and then boom. And all it really was was a retest of a diagonal line, and the next diagonal line in Hedera is at 12 cents. And you know you're going to have YouTube guys pressing this. Like you know that, right? Like they said the bull market is back, and it came back, and then the market got dropped. So people may be less inclined to get too bullish when I think this is when you get too bullish. Like if there was ever a day to say, all right, I'm just going to take the next dip and go with it. You may have to try it because here's my concluding line up 7% is not a big update in crypto. It's not, it's a big update today, but big picture. It's not a big update. It's like 1% up in equities. Okay. Go to my Twitter, crypto underscore noble. This is how you organize your head for a bull market. Quietly get bullish when everyone is bearish. When the rally starts, push the bullish case. Get more bullish when the market corrects and stay with the trend. No victory laps, no lampshade on your head. Don't do it. That's the market update for today. I'm your host, Bill Noble. We'll see you tomorrow.